have had the opportunity to review all of the exhibits that were admitted this morning. I have read through the briefing that has been submitted to the court and read a number of the cases that have been cited to the court by counsel. Um, and under State versus Michelli and under Rule 8.3b, a de defendant must show two things uh, before the court can dismiss charges. Arbitrary government action, government misconduct, or government mismanagement, and prejudice affecting a defendant's right to a fair trial. With regard to government uh, misconduct or mismanagement, the first prong of the test, under Brady, the police detective uh, must turn over to a defendant any exculpatory evidence or any evidence that would be impeachment evidence. And the intentional or inadvertent suppression of such evidence by police, if prejudice ensues, uh, is a violation under a court case known as Brady. In this case, the court does find that emails from Athena Dean and Jessica Gamble to Detective uh, McCall do constitute Brady material because the communications suggest a very strong animosity toward Malcolm Frazier and the church with which he is an associate pastor. Given the familial relationship, uh, the, the familial relationship of Jessica and Athena, and I don't mean any disrespect by just using their first names, uh, to the complaining witness, Malia, and the fact that the incidents Malia recounted to police occurred so many years ago, um, and the fact that Malia's mother and aunt's mother-in-law, I think, expressed such strong negative feelings about Malcolm Fraser for reasons unrelated to Malia's disclosure, make it at least possible that, as the defense suggests, Malia was somehow influenced by these women in recalling events that would have occurred when she was a fairly young child. The email from Detective McCall to Thelma Frazier, the May 14 email, is also Brady material in that it is clearly impeachment material. Uh, the defense can clearly argue that Detective McCall's personal religious beliefs affected his objectivity in assessing the credibility of Malia's disclosures and evaluating any influence that Athena and Jessica may have had leading up to Malia's disclosures. But it's also clear to the court that Detective McCall honestly did not see this information as Brady evidence. Um, the court concludes that his personal religious opposition to what he perceives is the theology of sound doctrine church may be affecting his judgment in this regard. While he testified that he would generally follow up and investigate the possibility of a motive to fabricate a story of child molestation, he saw no reason to do so in this case. And given that he hasn't talked to Malia about her relationship with Athena or Jessica or about any conversations uh, that she may have had about Malcolm with either of these women before uh, the disclosure, it's difficult to see how he could categorically reject the notion that their animosity toward Malcolm and the church played no role in Malia's disclosure of being raped. Now, as to Thelma's emails to Detective McCall, um, the court concludes that the emails from Malcolm's mother really have no evidentiary value, either substantively or by way of impeachment. Her emails do recount uh, Malcolm's upbringing and includes expressions of a mother's love and caring for her child, um, but Thelma had no contact with Malia, uh, Athena, or Jessica before the allegations arose, and she had no firsthand or even secondhand knowledge of any of the alleged events. And the information she provided about Malcolm's childhood, while it might be characterized as mitigation information, it, it's not Brady material. So the court does conclude that Detective McCall should have produced the communications he received uh, and sent back to Jessica Gamble, Greg Gamble, and Athena Dean. And the court also concludes that he should not have deleted these emails, even though he believed incorrectly, I, I conclude, that they had no evidentiary value. I don't find that his decision to delete these emails was malevolent 
or in any way intentional in, a, in an attempt to um, suppress evidence from the defense. But he should not have deleted these emails. Now, the second prong is prejudice to the defendant. And the court concludes um, that uh, the defendant has not demonstrated prejudice warranting dismissal of these charges against him. Uh, first, there is no speedy trial problem here. The date for trial, as I understand it, has been continued to January 16, 2013 at the defense request because of an unavailability of one of their witnesses. And the defense has had time and will have time to follow up on the information in the disclosed emails before trial without Mr. Frazier having to waive his right to a speedy trial. Now, with regard to the deleted emails, the court believes that there is a way to ameliorate the prejudice short of the dismissal of this case. The court will order the state to contact Athena Dean, Jessica Gamble, and Greg Gamble, and ask them to produce copies of any emails that they have had with Detective McCall. And they should be advised uh, to retain and not delete any of those uh, email communications that they have in or, or destroy in any format, whether they now have them in paper, in email, or if they've cut and pasted them and put them on a blog site. If the witnesses do not or will not produce the emails or these documents voluntarily, then the state should come to the court for a subpoena ducis tecum uh, which the state will then have the responsibility to serve on these witnesses. In addition, the state will perform a forensic analysis of the Enumclaw Police Department email server and Detective McCall's hard drive to see if any deleted emails uh, from or to Athena Dean, Jessica Gamble, or Greg Gamble can be retrieved. And this analysis shall be completed and the results disclosed to the defense by January 4, 2013. Now, one of the issues that was not discussed in great detail, um, but um, I do think needs to be readdressed, and that is the subpoena ducis tecum request from the defense to uh, Detective uh, McGill with regard to any documents relating to Sound Doctrine Church. And the response of the detective, sorry, I, I don't know what, what is on other police officers' computers. In this court's opinion, that's not a good enough response. And the Enumclaw Police Department uh, needs to search for and produce documents, whether they are on Detective McCall's computer or they are on any other uh, police officers' computers within the Enumclaw uh, Police Department. And that is subpoena number two, paragraph four. That, that's the specific uh, production request that I'm referring to. With regard to allegations that Detective McCall lied in his witness interviews or um, the, whether the email that he sent on May 14 to build rep rapport with Selma, whether that's really true or not, um, whether it was really the appropriate subject uh, of a police um, email to uh, a family member of a defendant, that will be an appropriate subject for cross-examination at trial. Any questions regarding the court's ruling on this motion? Is the court setting a uh, similar deadline for the production of materials in the um, second subpoena uses T paragraph number four? I think that's an appropriate request to ask, and I think December 4 would be more than ample time for that request to be fulfilled. That gives you uh, almost January. a month. January. January, excuse me, almost a month. January 4, 2013. Thank you. And is, is the court ordering that the Washington State Patrol specifically do the French You analysis? can figure out who you want to do it. It doesn't have to be the Washington State Patrol. Um, I'll leave that up to the state to decide whether they have the capability to do it in-house, whether they need to retrain a private entity to do it, or whether you want the state um, patrol to do uh, it. And, Your Honor, I would just request, obviously, that this, the court's ruling today be 
obviously put into writing. I'd be happy to complete that. I don't know. I'd be happy to do so, Your Honor. All right. All right. Anything further? Uh, one, one further request, and that is I have asked uh, the prosecution for the results of any internal investigation that was done with Detective McCall. I understand it was done. He testified today that it was done, and I have not received anything from the state. I would ask them to provide that information as well for January 4, 2013. Do you know? Do you know whether the uh, internal investigation has been completed? And you know, what I informed defense is what I have been told by an individual by the name of Sergeant Lytle, who, it's my understanding, he conducted the internal in club PD investigation that they found that um, Detective McCall. Um, did not necessarily violate any written policies um, that they have. Um, I am unaware, although there was discussion that they may actually be forwarding it to some other entity. I know there was requests that it be forwarded to, to it, my office. We said absolutely not. We're involved in this. It needs to go somewhere else. There was a notion that it would be forwarded to the Enumclaw City Prosecutor, who um, I understand has business dealings with the church. So I. I believe that um, ultimately our request certainly would be that if it's worth anyway, whether it be to WSP, who I think would be a completely. Oh, you mean for an outside if there's investigation? Sort of, and, and that's just simply because I know that defense has filed an, alle an allegation. Um, I personally would like it done by somebody who would, at least for all intents and purposes, be viewed as not biased and not connected in any way to well, this the, allegation. Of I the, guess the, the question at this stage is not what's going to happen in perhaps the internal investigation phase two. The question is, are the documents in the, what, what exists to this date in the internal investigation conducted by Sergeant Lytle discoverable? Are you going to ask for them from the police department and turn them over to the I defense? have requested them, and um, I have not received anything. I don't um, frankly know if it's com totally complete. And I would assume that they're not going to be sending anything to anyone until it's complete. Until the investigation is complete. Yes. And I, I have requested it. I believe under the state's obligation under 4.7, that is what I am required to do. Defense made a request of me, and I forwarded that request to the Union Club PD. I have not yet received anything. All right. So then the next question is, if they're unwilling to produce at this stage, what's the next step? Next step is probably a subpoena to the police department. And then that will give them the opportunity and their counsel and perhaps whatever, whoever else may have a legal um, objection to producing it at this stage if it's incomplete, an opportunity to object to the subpoena. So I think that's probably the next step is to have a subpoena issued. And again, and I would just note, just for everyone's benefit, it's my understanding that it will be provided to the state, and I will obviously provide it to defense immediately upon its completion. I just I'm well, but the problem is they've got you've got trial on the 16th of January. If they're not going to complete the investigation prior to trial, and therefore not want to turn over the internal investigation file, that's a problem, particularly if the sergeant has made findings as you, as you have represented. I think they're entitled to see what the scope of the investigation was to this date and the findings. So you make the request, you, you issue a subpoena, that will give the PD an opportunity to register an objection if they think one can be had at this point. All right? Your Honor, uh, there's one further matter that I'd like to address with the court, and perhaps the court could reserve uh, issue on consideration of this, but uh, because of the governmental misconduct, uh, my client has been extremely prejudiced both financially and uh, with his resources in pursuing this. And because of the governmental misconduct, I would like to pursue and will not indicate to the state that we may seek um, some type of sanction uh, that this court could order against the uh, Inclaw Police Departments for its failures to provide discovery as required by law. That's certainly something that you would need to note up as another motion yeah. so that the court and the state would have an opportunity Absolutely. as well as even Claw Public uh, Police Department. All right. With that, then, thank you very much. We will be in recess. All rise.